Hello, everybody. Welcome to Little John's Yarns. If this is your very first time here, I'm Alicia. And what we like to do here, crochet or knit, talk about um, all of that and drink a little bit of wine. But today you'll notice something a little bit extra. I have one of my very good friends. She is like a crafty godmother mentor, <laughs> Maria from the Underground Crafter. So how are you doing here today? And welcome. Thanks. I'm doing great. I'm super excited to be on your show. Uh, as as you possibly know, live streaming is not necessarily my thing, but I totally do it for only my favorite besties. So <laughs> I'm really excited to be here. Don't feel uncomfortable. Well, you're allowed to feel uncomfortable. I tell my <laughs> audience every single week, even though I do this every single Saturday, two seconds before I get this knot inside my belly. And the wine that we're drinking, do you have your cup? I have my cup. I don't have wine. That's I, okay. This would be a really big cup for wine, I think. <laughs> could probably not make it through the show. <laughs> but that's, but I'm drinking fear. some of my favorite ginger ale. So. Ooh, but my fear developed. So that's why I had my liquid. It was disguised in a coffee cup at first. Gotcha. But by the end of the live stream in a coffee cup, <laughs> the cat came out the bag. Yeah, the little wine glass is better, I think. <laughs> yes. So everybody, I'm just going to let you know how the setup is going to go. We're going to ask some questions to uh, the underground crafter and get all of our answers. And at the very end, then we'll get to all of your questions. So. Awesome. Miss Marie, I love yes. your name. That's my middle name. When did you start crocheting? So I actually learned to crochet from my grandmother back in the 1980s. So I'm an old school crocheter. Um, she was, uh, she actually went to trade school in the depression for needle crafts. Like that was instead of high school, she learned sewing and, and she used to do uh, work in a sweatshop like way back in the day. So um, she was a master of every needle craft. So she taught me to crochet. She actually taught me to knit too, but it didn't stick. That was not a thing I could do until way later. So I didn't start knitting until about 2010. But uh, I kind of always crocheted on and off through my childhood, but it wasn't really until you could find patterns and stuff online that I got really into crochet. So probably like around 2002, I started um, following some different, you know, uh, this was even like before there was a lot of bloggers. It was more like, um, AOL old timers yeah. will know what I'm talking about, like, yeah. you know, sites and whatever, and people would put up their patterns, you know, for a granny square or something. So um, that's how I learned to read patterns. And then once I learned to read patterns, it's just like, you couldn't stop me, you know, because before that, I was basically just making one or two stitches and a scarf, that kind of thing. But once I could read patterns, I was like, oh, I could do this, I could do that. And so I just, it kind of took over my life and uh, yarn has been everywhere since then. So do you have any... I mean, your name is not the underground crocheter. Do you have any other like uh, hobbies, like skills? What else do you do? Yeah, so I also do a little bit of sewing. This is actually a quilt that I made. You can sort of see in the background. Um, I do a little bit of embroidery. Unfortunately, my eyesight is not what it once was. So <laughs> that doesn't always work out so great. And I've made soap before. I done uh, the hot process method with um, using a slow cooker. So um, that's another craft that I've done. And I do a lot of Cricut crafts on my blog. So, I mean, I, I really, I try pretty much anything, you know, but I would say the sort of yarn and fibrous crafts are really my, kind of my main thing. Okay. I'm a crafter. You have a thousand more crafts than I do. What does this <laughs> look like? What does this look like? Because I know behind this beautiful corner that you see right here, is chaos yes, on the, side right. of the camera. Like, how, what, what does it look like? So there's like <laughs> boxes of yarn and fabric and whatever. And now, you know, since uh, COVID, cause I also work full time, I'm a college professor. So I'm also, this is like my bedroom slash craft room slash teaching room. I mean, it's, it's like mass chaos. One day I hope to reorganize it into <laughs> a sane uh, way, but you're right. This is totally hiding <laughs> insanity that's behind this. And then also uh, hopefully preventing um, strange cat uh, attacks that may happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know the audience is thinking right now, like, wow, she has a lot of stuff. What she just mentioned is just the surface of what she <laughs> You're a college professor. 
Mm -hmm. What do you teach? I teach, uh, I teach business. So I teach it at a liberal arts college. So um, it's like all types of business because we're a small school. So I teach basically everything that isn't mathy about business. So I teach uh, entrepreneurship, marketing, um, you know, uh, general management, human resources, not the accounting and finance and that kind of stuff. So um, I teach basically a whole bunch of stuff because our school's small. So everyone really yeah. kind of chips in to teach different subjects. It's not like, you know, a giant university where everyone is really, really specialized. I don't understand how you find the time to be a college professor and work on your business at the level that you do. You put out content like I've never seen. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I do produce a lot of content. I mean, I think, well, first of all, I, I'm always making stuff. Um, and the name Underground Crafter was originally, you know, now I haven't been commuting since March. But, um, you know, usually I would be commuting every day to work and I do a lot of my crafts on the subway. So that's why it's Underground Crafter. People think it's like some mysterious underground. See, one of my questions, I'm like, <laughs> this mysterious underground. No. What happened? So, See, yeah. So that's kind of one way, like I, I used to do a lot on the on the way to and from work. And my commute was, you know, depending on where I was working, you know, half an hour to 45 minutes. So that's, you know, like a decent amount of stuff you could do every day. And then, you know, after I am done with work, I just, I feel like I need to unwind. So I, I definitely uh, crochet and knit um, pretty much every day. Uh, so that, that's, helpful I think in terms of being productive and then it's like what am I going to do with all this stuff so <laughs> I find I if I I might as well write down the pattern you know if I'm going to make it so uh you know that's kind of that's sort of how my business started uh I mean I think a little bit like you originally I was selling the mm -hmm. stuff that I made but that that wasn't really for me what I'm not like because I'm telling people you were OG but when did to me the crochet internet thing happened for like to me big 2010 till currently it got huge. Yeah, I think it grew a lot faster. So right, like probably around 2007, I started doing yeah. some local craft fairs around, um, I live in New York City, so in Manhattan and Brooklyn. And then it just like combining, I mean, I know there's people that do it and, you know, bless them because they can, but it was just impossible. You know, I would work all week, I'd be totally exhausted. And um, at that time I was working in a high school and, you know, uh, that was 98% or 97% male. So, you know, you're dealing with teenage boys and you're all day, them. right? And then, and then I would come home and on the weekend I'd pack up, you know, giant plastic crates and get on the subway mm -hmm. you know, and go to some craft fair and then stand all day trying to sell stuff. It just, it didn't work for me. So, um, and also I feel like to sell your handmade goods, it's like merchandising in a store. Like you go in a store and you see, you know, like 10 hats, but they're yeah. all in different colors, you know, and that looks beautiful. In a different color. Oh, this is beautiful. You have it in yellow. Right, right. But it's like, I don't want to make the same hat 10 times. That's not what I find relaxing. You know, like some people that's comforting. It's like, oh, the same stitches. I know it by heart. I want to make a different hat every time. And then mm -hmm. When you do that at a craft fair, you sort of look like, I don't know, like the marshals of craft fairs, just like stuff on a rack thrown yeah. all over the place. It and doesn't you touch your stuff and throw it. I'm yeah. Like, and it's like harder to kind of merchandise it, I think, one of a kind stuff. So, you know, all of that together, I was like, this isn't for me. So probably around, I think 2009 maybe was the last craft fair I did. And I had started teaching already. So I was teaching um, on the weekends and actually um, at my lunch hour during work, I would go different places and teach from there. And so, um, you know, I just sort of transitioned into online from that. Super chat. Oh. oh, my bubbles isn't working. Let's see, <gasps> my girl Maria. Hello, Maria. You're my Hello. spirit animal. I choose a marketing major because I wanted the business degree, but literally said accounting numbers, blah, finance numbers, blah. Marketing is in my blood. I love it. Yay. That's so exciting. I mean, marketing has numbers sometimes, but we can sort of get away without them. So <laughs> Thank you, Maria, you get a cheers to you. And cheers. Oh, where were we? Oh, we were transitioning 2009. Mm. 
So yeah, I started uh, I started my blog in yeah. 2011. 2011. And like you said, at that time, blogging was a lot different. Um, I mean, there's still people who do this, but it was mostly personal blogs like- Yeah, my day. Here's a right, or, you know, hey, I made a project and you didn't have to worry about photography. Like you <laughs> could even have posts without pictures, you know, it was like a whole different world. Um, so I kind of started then and then I think it wasn't until maybe, uh, and I had already some patterns, which because I was teaching, you know, I designed some stuff for my students, but it wasn't probably till 2012, I think that I started doing free patterns uh, on my blog. So it was kind of a slow progression. Um, you know, maybe if I wasn't working, I would be flying through these different things, but I think yeah. it's also good because it's given me a chance to learn uh, different elements and sort of slowly build them into my business yeah like i was telling you before we became on came on a live i wanted to thank you i didn't realize because we when you first emailed me i think it was last year exactly who you were in 2015 guys this is my story in 2015 i wanted to start selling my own handmade items and when you search online like how to sell your handmade goods you hear go to a craft fair mm -hmm. i'm tired of hearing go to a craft fair <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> So one of the very few peoples was Marie teaching you how to do this. And what truly stuck out was your last name. Hmm. Cigares? Mm -hmm. Is this a woman of color? This, it was very rare in our yeah. crochet craft community. It was nice seeing somebody like yourself. And now that you've been nice enough to involve me in other projects, everything that you involve people in, it is a, such a diverse <laughs> I try very hard crafters yeah Every single time I'm like wow yeah I mean it's weird because I I mean I, I, I you know I live in New York City so yeah. you can't go anywhere and, and only see white crafters I mean that's just not our reality right it's I like in a little town in Pennsylvania my family's the only black family in mm, this town. okay so maybe in your situation <laughs> it's it's different yeah. but you know, I guess that was the thing that I found weird when I started getting more into the business side. It's like, where is everybody? Because, you well, know, in New York, if you go to a crafty thing, it's like there's black people, there's Latinas, there's, you know, men, there's women, there's old, young, you know, Asian, yeah, everybody's there, online. you know. But then at least when I started, when you looked online, it was like you know, everyone is sort of like Anglo white people and which is, you know, not that they to begrudge them, but it's just like, where's everybody else, you know? So I think uh, for me, it was always kind of important to make sure those other people are, are like actually seen, you know? So I used to do, um, on my blog, I used to do a Hispanic Heritage Month thing where I would just interview, you know, other Latin Latino people that, could share their story and it's like they're here too you know and now i think that's just it's more obvious because people are openly speaking about it it's not just like quietly behind the, behind the curtains yeah exactly so people are saying you know where's the diversity where's the diversity and so it's it's great to see that finally you know different crafters are are being more visible i think um so yeah when i do events and stuff i try to reflect that because i think what happens a lot of times is you know, you get into a Facebook group or something and the people in that group are, you know, a certain set of people. And then if you just only keep going to the same group of people every time, like, do you want to be in this, you know, um, make along with me or do you want to be in this blog hop? Then your audience is always seeing the same people every time, too. So it's like your audience is missing out and you're missing out at the same time, if that makes sense. So, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. A little bit off topic. So when did you realize, okay, you're the underground craft, you're this cool crafty crochet person. I know you'll never say it, but to me, you're like, when I went back after that first email, I'm like, who is this? That's, that's Maroon. <laughs> <laughs> my heart skipped a beat. Like, did I respond back to my email? I went back to my sent <laughs> inbox. I'm like, did I phrase that correctly? <laughs> when did you realize you were an influencer that you were able to help people and recommend things and yeah, so I think, um, like, like I said, when I first was doing my blog, it was it was a lot more haphazard. It was just like, 
I'll throw up a pattern here and there. I'll share my yarn haul. That was that was a big thing. Then it still is on videos, I think. But this is yeah. yarn hauls with no pictures. <laughs> it's a little different back in the day. Um, but you know, so I would show stuff like that. And then at some point, I think it was around 2014. I was like, you know, I want to focus more on this side because I want to make money from this. You know, it's like, it's not only a hobby. I'm putting a lot of time into it. So I want to make money out. So I started thinking about it more business-like. Uh, and so I changed up my blog. I added advertising. I started doing patterns every week, you know, things that are more consistent for my audience. And at the same time, I had started my podcast, uh, which was the Creative Yarn Entrepreneur Show. Yeah. So I did that for three years. And so that was like weekly, I think, mostly. Uh, and then basically yeah. what I did was I just kind of shared what I already knew about the yarn industry. Because at that point, there were a lot of bloggers that were actually interested in publishing because there were more magazines then. A lot of them have shut down now. And there was a big divide between sort of like the designers that were in a magazine and bloggers. The real ones. Right. And I was one of the few people that did both. You know, I had magazine um, publications and I had my blog. So I originally was mostly sharing like, how do you get into a magazine and that kind of stuff. And then as I started expanding the show, you know, people would ask, well, how do you do this? Or, you know, what do you recommend about that? And so I, when I didn't know the answer myself, I would invite a guest and say, you know, yeah. how do you do this? Right. So I did a mix of shows where it was just me and then um, shows where I had guests that were like expert in something and they would yeah. share about their business. And so, I mean, I think for me, it's just, I, I don't see the purpose of just keeping information for yourself, you know? It it's like, it doesn't hurt me if someone else knows something too. So I'm not like hoarding the knowledge of the industry and no one else can have it. Um, so it's just, you know, another aspect of my business at that time was, was doing that. Somebody asked a, a funny comment, the question, uh, question in the comment, I guess we're um, ambiguous. I'm not sure. Somebody wants to know what exact rates are they? <laughs> what exact race are, are an American? Yes. Yeah, yes. So I'm, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so I'm, I'm Cuban American and um, also Italian American. So that's my background, but my family is, is pretty multicultural. So my sister is actually Mexican American. So we have a lot of different uh, various Latin heritage uh, in our family. <laughs> so what are some of the companies that you work with? So I just see that when you were talking, I look, somebody says, I'm sorry, what are they? <laughs> Sorry, we were too vague. <laughs> okay, so what are, what are some of the companies? I'm sure you work with them all, but just so way back, I first got my first pattern was published in Crochet World, which is yes, still there. I just knocked on wood for those who weren't sure. It's one of the <laughs> magazines that's hanging in one of the print magazines, uh, and I've worked with a bunch of different crochet magazines that you know don't exist anymore in knitting magazines. So I've I've done that. Um, I've also worked with. Uh, different yarn companies like Lion Brand uh, is one that I've worked with. Um, I do now more stuff independently. So, oh, we got a super chat. Oh, this is one of my faves, Miss Lori Murphy. Oh. Hey, Miss, you last, last few laughs. No, you didn't because I took a vacation. Happy to catch you today. So that's good. You didn't even miss anything, Lori. And nope. you got the bubbles. I know. And you get the bubbles, drink. Lights and a drink. Yeah, I have it all rigged up and everything. Oh, and guys, if you're wondering why the lights are going off right now, what I have is Super Chat. If you would ever like to donate to any one of your favorite YouTubers down below on a live stream, if you look below in your comment section, you'll see a little dollar sign. When you do, my bubbles and lights will go off and I'll pull your car in front and we'll give you a cheers. So thank you so much, Miss Lori. Hey, okay, that's exciting. Where were, were you still wrapping up your long list of companies and accomplishments? Oh, companies. Yeah. Uh, so now I mostly, I work a lot with Cricut, actually. I don't know if people use cutting machines, uh, any of your audience. Why do you use <clears throat> those? Yeah. So oh, I've worked with Cricut a lot <laughs> for the past few years. Um, so, uh, and then I also, uh, I do a ton of make-alongs every year. So I do usually like somewhere between eight and 12 at least every year. And for all of those, I try to get really cool prizes. So there's some companies that 
I just only work with for prizes. Like I don't actually work with them that much. So I would email them and say, you know, hey, we're doing this crochet along or this knit along or this sew along, you know, will you donate yeah. prizes so that crocheters that are participating can win something cool. And so I work with a ton of companies like that too. So that that's really fun because even though, um, you know, I would like all the cool stuff, I only live in a one bedroom apartment. So See, there's limits to what I can can keep in here. So I would, you know, in that way, I can sort of share that company with other people. So that's cool, too. That's what I would love to. I might have to bother you after an email. I want to do make alongs. Everybody's like, Alicia, why don't you do make alongs? I still don't understand. I just have to probably go on your blog and just look at it mm -hmm. <laughs> and see the whole process of it. I've never done one before. Okay. So you can do them on your own, like just Alicia's make along that you pick a pattern, you want people to make it. Um, or I do that. I also do a lot of multi-designer make-alongs. So yeah. I'll invite, yeah. you know, 10 or 12 or 20, depending on the, the length of it, uh, designers to join in. And then we'll each share patterns on certain dates. It's usually like a blog hop. So they'll stop at your site, let's say um, one week, and then they'll come to my site one week and there'll be patterns on a different theme. So uh, that's, it, it takes a lot of organization and that's sort of like that. how my brain works. So for me, it's, it's sort of easy to put them together, not easy, but like a routine. But I think for some people that's not how their brain works. And then it's like, it's just spirals out into craziness. The first time I got invited to, it was in January, one of your blog mm -hmm. crochet alongs, hop along, your sign up sheet and the details <laughs> and the this. I'm like, sign up on block A230. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's nothing for you, but for me, I'm like, I got to learn this to get better at what I want to do. <laughs> it could be overwhelming, I think. Um, and then also, one of the things, some of the ones that I do with multiple designers, I, I work with other people. So, um, like Pia from Stitches and Scraps, she usually does the like the logo or the the banner images, so I don't have to deal with that. And then um, like Rhonda from Umbaqua yeah. Crochet, she usually will do like uh, moderating in the group, and Amy from the Stitching Mommy, and Jesse from Jesse at Home. So it's like we all kind of split up different things based on what we're more focused on, um, and they have their own, you know crochet longs and stuff yeah. too. So it's like everybody, um, we try to sort of play off each other's strengths. That helps too, I think. Yeah. Like you guys are amazing. So uh, for your own personal business, is this all you? Because personally, I find my, it's difficult being HR, tech, uh, all these hats. Do you do it all yourself or do you have help? So my partner, he helps with some of the technical backend stuff, um, especially at the beginning. Uh, he did a lot more of that. Now I, I have a, a different host for my website and they do some of that also. But um, at the start, I just was a, a much smaller blog and people think a smaller blog would be easier, but it's actually kind of harder because um, most of the companies, they charge a lot of money to actually help you to manage your blog. And so if you're not making that much money yet, it doesn't make sense to be paying them all this money. So for a bunch of years, I was like super DIY about it. And so he helped a lot with that. But other than that, um, it's really just me. Uh, we were talking before the call. I mean, like right now I'm knitting uh, a project that's coming out in a few weeks, sneak peek. Um, but I uh, <laughs> can't tell what it is, but it's still sneaky. But um, you know, a lot of the bigger designers, they actually have other people knit or crochet their samples, but that's my favorite part. So I don't want to give that up. Um, but then it does limit how much you can do, right? Because you only have your two hands and, <laughs> you know, X amount of hours in the day. So uh, for me, it's, I try to keep it um, contained in myself, especially because I work, I sort of create some boundaries on how much time I spend on the business too. I remember the first time I talked to you, um, I was asking you for help. You know, I'm coming to you like, I'm exhausted. I'm working at work. I'm trying to do this. And you're like, yeah, that's great. I'm a, a college professor. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> like, I realized, like, if you want to do this, you're going to figure out how to do it. You let me know, like, what course and plan of action I should mm -hmm. take. And I'm like, okay. 
Don't overburden myself because as women, we like to think we can do it all. Yep. Focus on what you know now, learn that. Yep. Then move on to the next one. Focus on that and learn that. Because last January, I was in panic mode. Now, mm-hmm. last January is nothing. Now, that's easy stuff. I can wish I can go back to January. Now mm-hmm. January. I know, right? Who knew this year would be like this, right? Now it's a new January. Now I'm like, I'm just as flustered, but I just need to know this too will pass. And once I get used to it, this part of this crochet craft world will be easier, but it's rough. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things I like is that it's, you know, I, I'm, I think a lot of crafters were like this. We like to make things and do yeah. things and try things. And then we want to try some other things. Like we got bored. I mean, I don't know about you, but I have like, you know, probably 25 half started projects in various stages of completion. And it's sort of like that in this online business, because yeah. as soon as you learn something, it changes and you've got to learn something else. So it's like you're always learning new things and doing new things, which I like. Um, I'll, I'll, not to say that I don't get annoyed. Like yes. when I logged into the new Facebook, I'm not going to say that wow. you know, it wasn't like yeah. beep, beep. <laughs> but, yeah, where, how do I find this? You know, but, um, you know, it's, it's like, that's part of, you know, being in this kind of business is like, you're always learning and you're always finding new things. And I, I like that in general, not the new Facebook. I don't like, but, <laughs> but in general, I like new things, you know, a lot of my viewers, they want to know how to make money or venture into this. You don't have to give much detail, but what would you, what advice would you give to those who want to venture into even just selling their handmade items or sure. becoming an online pattern designer? Or- yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the the thing that I I usually say to people is I don't personally know any crochet businesses that are successful and only do one thing. So that's something you kind of really have to get into your head. So yeah. um, if you want to make a lot of money, multiple Super- things. Oh, I see bubbles. Oh, this is Unapologetic Mocha, another one of my favorite. Awesome to meet another multi-crafter. <laughs> Yay, multi-crafters are awesome. Yeah, I'm not awesome. <laughs> I'm a multi-sampler. Oh, no, you have a, don't you do like, you have like a knitting. Um, Wait, it's not real knitting. Thing. It's the so what? Those things scare me. I the, see, and you can do that. What? What is that thing called? A knitting? A, um, the Cadillac one is the Addy Circular Knitter. All you do is make okay. panels. It sounds scary. And I crochet around it, and that's all I have to do. But sure. you've you've achieved it. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my last good questions: What is what is your plans for Underground Crafter? So, um, I think you know, uh what last year taught me is that uh, you can't, you know, you can't always plan ahead exactly for what you plan to do. But in general, um, you know, this year I'm just trying to, I think, hopefully normalize a little bit. I feel like last year was like, you know, your hair was on fire every minute, yeah. every day. So I'm, I'm hoping to take it down like 75 notches if <laughs> I can. Um, but what for my business, I think uh, last year I was, um, I was also in school. I was getting my doctorate. And so I actually had a lot of guests. Oh, you had a lot of free time. Last year. <laughs> I had a lot of guest bloggers on my site and I didn't design as much as I usually do. Cause I just, and then that turned out to be good because of all the other 2020 stuff that was going on. But um, this year I want to have more of my own original designs again on the blog. So that's something I'm focusing on uh, trying to have more of those and still continue the guest posters. Cause I think my readers like that a lot. Like they love your posts. They love seeing oh, just different people getting to know different people. Uh, and then, you know, following you or whoever the other guest poster is because, you know, people who love to do things, they just always want inspiration, you know? So yeah. just continuing to offer that in, in different ways. Oh, that's awesome. So that's pretty much all the questions, but we're going to get some questions from the audience. Okay. Whatever questions that you have right now, make sure they're appropriate. Put question marks right in front of your question so I can see it so we can bring it up to the front. While you guys are getting your questions right now, let's see, do I have any extra for you? Right now, you've been doing this for, oh, wow, 12, 12 years? Yeah, thereabouts, yeah. Does the stress level ever go down? (laughs) Um, No, I'm looking. (laughs) 
so. I mean, you know, so yeah, one, of the, one of the pluses of being the owner of your own business is that you can sort of determine the stress level a little bit. Um, and so, you know, you can change your idea of how much money you need to make. You can change your idea of how you make that money. Um, you, you're in control, right? Which is why a lot of people like being in their own business. So I have no, I know a ton of designers and makers and all types of craft businesses. And I've seen, you know, people that have taken time off because of a personal situation. Um, people who have just totally changed their business model so they're not involved in it as much day to day uh, because of the stress or whatever. So, I mean, it is definitely possible. You just have to sort of think about how you want your business to be and what type of income you expect to make, if that makes sense. It so I know people that put, uh, they hire a lot of other people to do a lot of their business. So they take that stress away. But see, to me, because I, I used to manage a team of people, that's the stress I don't want. I don't want to yeah. be telling somebody, hey, you're late or I don't like how you did this. That's the stress I don't want. I want to just, you know, I, I'd rather blame myself than be dealing with, you know, 20 million other people's business and their problems. So, but other people that they would rather delegate it and have somebody else manage it. So it kind of yeah. depends on your personality a little bit too, I think, if that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense because I find myself right now wondering where do I want to be? I love crochet, but I also have this addictive personality where I can't make myself stop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like I have to, when you invited me for the uh, crochet bundle, I'm like, mm -hmm. awesome. I had just narrow focus. Mm -hmm. A guy, she had this crochet bundle with 41 crochet designers. It was awesome. But between the designers, we had to see who sold the most. Yeah. So therefore, the first day I did so bad, I'm like, I'm not even on the top list. And I just, the, and then you skyrocketed to the top. <laughs> but it caused myself mental stress and good stress. Oh, because of that good stress, I everybody, I came in first place. I also other 40 people. Yeah. I bought myself a, a bicycle desk. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yes. So now I have can crochet on my desk. I like that. I didn't desk. even know that was a thing. See, I knew I knew you would have some cool, some cool <laughs> thing that you would tell me about. Actually, That's I gotta tell uh, Matt about that. He actually, would be intrigued by the bicycle. I always do like crochet gadget reviews. I love this thing. I know it has nothing to do with a crochet gadget. But it does because it's like you can be sedentary and exercise all yeah. at the same time. See, <laughs> coming like this whole crochet blogger, YouTuber, I sit on my, even if I work out for an hour a day, I yeah. sit down the other 20. Very sedentary. <laughs> so, and I mean, this year, because I've been working from home, usually, you know, I would actually get up and go to a place um, either, you know, when I was teaching, I'd go to the college or I would work from my mom's apartment a bunch of days because she has way better lighting than I do. Um, but now it's like I'm basically at home. So all those walks up and down the stairs, whatever, you got to find a way to make that make <laughs> that way. happen. I was trying to tell my daughter. Oh, she at work. Okay, she went to work so I can talk about her. Like, Child. She's like, Mom, I just, she's 20. She's like, Mom, I just can't lose weight. I'm like, you're beautiful as you are. But if you want to be healthy, just start with standing up. That's yeah. all. Mm-hmm. My, all my kids are laying <laughs> for the past. They haven't been in school. They just laying. Yeah, no, it's, 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 you realize how uh, it changes your habits for sure, you know. Okay, we got Ooh. our first question from Reggie. This is one of our moderators. She also has a YouTube channel. So, guys, awesome. after this, how do you approach companies to donate prizes? So, um, here's the thing about me I'm not afraid of rejection. So uh, if I want to do something, I just ask people. Well, the worst they can do is say no, right? And I think the way I approach companies is I think about how do I write a polite letter to someone and ask them for something, <laughs> and then I do it. And so I don't like, you know, and, and I know it sounds silly, but a lot of people, they're afraid if they ask, the company is going to what? But what are they going to do? come to your house, slap you upside the head. I mean, they're not, they can't do anything. They could just be like, no, we don't want to give you a prize. Um, but in all seriousness, usually it helps to have something called a media kit, which is basically explaining um, your following and the size of your okay. uh, followers. 
<laughs> um, and so you want to just let them know and then also how it's going to be used and things like that. So, you know, um, and also keeping in mind that they're probably busy-ish people. So, you know, I usually write a kind of uh, an email uh, now and I would say, you know, like, dear company, whatever, you know, I'm Marie, I'm a blog, whatever it is, I'm a crochet blogger, I'm a knitting blogger, depending on the company. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing X, Y, Z, and we want to have a giveaway at the end. And can I, you know, get a prize from your company? And, you know, this is the way that I will promote your company. And this is the way that, you know, this is who my audience is and that kind of thing. And then once you already know them, you don't usually have to give them your stats as much. So um, you just sort of say, hey, it's me again. Thanks for supporting us last time. This is a new thing we're doing. Would you give a prize? That kind of thing. I hope okay. that makes sense. Here's a side question. Okay, I know that is the norm behind the scene for other bloggers. They know that that is the norm. Was Did you know this? Did you, not you individually create this norm, but how did you guys know to do this? Um, I mean, I so I've always... I, I don't know. I'm you like, I, I'm not afraid of, of that. So I remember people always being like, how do you get prizes for stuff? It's like, I asked people, you know, I mean, that, the, so that's the first part. And I think it helps if you pick a company that you like or know already. Um, mm -hmm. Like if you've, it, it's helpful, like, let's say you've already been commenting on their stuff online or something. They, they make, know you that's not always so because with a bigger company whoever's in charge of their instagram page let's say may not be the person who is uh that the email form gets sent to and things like that but with a smaller company they may already know you as like yeah. one of their followers so they'll be like oh cool it's that person who's been sharing our stuff you know why not so i think it it sort of depends on the company but you know, like I said, so the worst thing can do is just say, no, we don't support small bloggers or, mm -hmm. you know, that's not in our budget or, you know, just usually they just don't respond if they don't want to do it. Um, and if you want to avoid the no's, a tip is you can say, if I don't hear from you by X date, um, I will assume that you're not participating. And then they don't even have to say no and you don't have to feel bad about yeah. it. So that's another option uh, if you don't like hearing people say no. <laughs> okay, uh, another one of my favorites. I just friended her on Instagram, XD Symphony. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite thing to crochet when you first started? So I learned when I was a kid and basically um, half double crochet scarves, like a solid Wait. 10 years of half double crochet <laughs> scarves. <laughs> Um, and then I would make them like, you know, for Christmas for my family members and stuff. And when I first learned to read patterns, I was pretty much obsessed with granny squares. So yeah. every type of motif, granny square, granny hexagon, okay. granny triangle, every one of those. Okay. Here we go. From Miss Dieta. She's another one of our moderators. She always makes sure everybody in the live chat is being okay. So what is your favorite yarns? Oh, that is like, I mean, all beautiful. first of all, the yarns are here behind me. Okay. So I can't be talking about the yarns like that. So, <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, I, I, I love, I, I don't think there's that many yarns I don't like. Um, I will say I'm an ambassador with King Cole yarns and a lot of folks in the States are not as familiar with their yarns. They have some really nice yarns that are very soft. Um, I like the whole uh, beaches series of yarns a lot. There's island right. beaches, beaches, and yeah. paradise beaches. But I also use a ton of Lion Brand yarns, and my favorite of theirs is probably Heartland, mm -hmm. uh, I think. And I love, you know, I don't think I've really met that many yarns I don't love. I mean, I love the indie dyed stuff. I love, you know, home, you know, hand spun yarns that have thick and thin and um, all of that good stuff. Basically, you pretty much love every single yarn. There's not too many. I mean, there's a few that it's like, don't, don't, don't get in my way, yarn. I don't like <laughs> you. But in general. <laughs> hmm. Oh. This one is from De uh, Denise. Crochet, uh, crochet relieves my stress doing things. Uh, crafty relieves stress. How about you? I know it does for me. It does. I feel the same way. That's like at the end of the day, I really try to get my crochet on for like at least an hour if I can. Um, I just find it so 
it's just the whole hand eye motion thing. For it's me, just very it's, relaxing. I agree. It's that mantra, especially if I love making hats. So you know how you have to do increases. I yeah. always count one, two, increase. Three. Yes. Yes. It's like a mantra, and I'm relaxing while I'm saying it, and I, I can tune out the husband. I'm like, listen, I'm on road number five, stitch number seventy-two. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah, that's Matt would say. He's like, um, if I wore a crochet suit, would you be more interested? Maybe. I'm like, <laughs> we'll put the time into that. I, I might. <laughs> this is from Miss Maria. Uh, bicycle desk. Inquiring minds want to know. I hear you, Maria. I want to okay. know too. I will show you if you promise not to talk about my craft room. <laughs> okay. Let me take the webcam down. Oh, can you guys see it? Oh, that is cool. Yeah, it does not shake. It does not rattle. Wow. It does, it's perfect. And I bought, you have to buy the extender pieces for it to okay. be really good. So now I can write on it. Oh, let me put this right. Am I normal? Yeah. You look now I can use a mouse if I feel like it and uh, write on a notebook. It has a coffee cup oh, that's holder. That's cool. I like the coffee cup holder thing. In two days, our family, because my uh, kid uses it for homeschooling too. Mm -hmm. We've gone about 70 something miles. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, especially like you said, with the homeschooling and everything, I feel like it's so hard for kids to be in front of, you know, digital stuff all day. That's such a cool thing. So hopefully, um, I feel I honored that my bundle could contribute to. It did. Like. I want a prize. I deserve something. It's not cheap. It costs three hundred twenty dollars with the extension desks with extra fifty dollars. So, but I worked hard on this crochet selling bundle. Yes, you did. And also, I think you know, like that's going to pay off in health and relaxingness and all that good stuff. Yeah, and get rid of that crochet butt. Okay, <laughs> that's what I like to call it. Do we have any more questions for uh, Miss Marie? Let me know now, right now. So put a question mark right in front of it. So we'll pull up to the front. So we're probably going to be here for another only five more minutes. Then we'll wrap it up. Let's see. Am I missing? Wait, we got a super chat. It just popped up. <laughs> My daughter in the background said, woo. Tamisha, I hope I pronounced that right. Cheers to you. Thank you, ladies, for sharing your knowledge with the world. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be good with you and not be too tipsy. I had a live stream with my friend on Wednesday. We call it Crochet Gone Wild. Okay. We're talking about novelty yarns. And it's uh, evening. I never do evening live streams. And okay. I didn't realize a half bottle went. <laughs> Next thing you know. Next thing you know, I'm like, I, I do I need to delete my live? Wow. That's probably good, though. A little, You, you told them they were, you were going wild. <laughs> Wasn't false advertising. <laughs> Amber says, what is the average difficulty level of most of your patterns? So I would say most of my patterns are in the easy to intermediate range. I don't really design um, highly experienced patterns uh, because... I don't think my audience wants that much drama in their lives. You know, like they're, they're mostly trying to crochet to not be stressed out. Uh, and when I do intermediate patterns, I don't do myself that many um, videos. I'm not amazing like Ms. Little John, ah. but um, I do uh, try to link up to other video tutorials and stuff. So people, if they don't know the stitch, they can kind of find out how to do that. Okay. Well, well, this is a, okay. What's the best way about uh, starting a blog? I should have put all my Bluehost links down below. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a big believer in like, don't spend money until you're making money. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like when you want to start something, you know, start sort of small and grow into it. So there are free blogging services you can start with. You can start with WordPress or a blogger. And then if you decide like, oh, I'm making money with this, then you can go to Bluehost or another uh, company and get your hosting. Um, some people would say, you know, oh, start as you mean to do, you know, always start super professional. And, but I find that people invest in things and then they decide and quit. That they're not worth it. Like, for example, let's say you buy this blog domain and you invest in the hosting and then you realize you're more of a video person and not a writing person. And so 
your blog now that you've spent all this money on and you could have basically been operating for free off YouTube. So it's like, I think you should sort of try stuff. And then if it works for you, then invest the money. That's yeah. I enjoy idea. working. What I learned first was selling my custom handmade items. What I learned next for some people, we were talking about this. It was Instagram. Those are the people who blew up on Instagram. For me, what I learned next was YouTube. But oh, we have a super chat from Miss Denise. Thank you so much and cheers to you. <laughs> but I did not learn. <laughs> My daughter's in the background. I'm not going to show you a picture. Don't worry. She's on the bike right now. Woohoo! Biking her way to health. Good health. health. Good health, yeah. Okay, oh, I, I can't bring your thing down. It's just gonna pause for a second. Let's see. Unfreeze. There we go. But what I was saying, I learned one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. I had to teach myself. I know personally, I give all this information out, but I did not learn all of this overnight. YouTube, yes. you can kind of tell where people started first. I can tell you were a blogger. Yeah. Your blog is you. When I see TL Yarncraft, she's a great YouTuber too, but I can see her Instagram like that was you first. Yeah. For me first, that was YouTube. Yep. I learned the ins and out of that and I can tell you how to get your video to rank on the first page and get views like nothing. But when I look at your blog, I'm like, I'm only getting this many views. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> well, and it's also, I think um, it's like people are, you have interest in communicating in different ways too. You know, yes. you like, I assume talking and, and being more yeah. uh, like audio visual, right. People can see you and they can connect with you. And then I'm, you know, especially cause a lot of my stuff is being done in the middle of the night cause of, you know, work stuff. I don't want anybody looking at me in my pajamas <laughs> and whatever. So I'd rather, you know, write it down. So it's like, there's, there's also like aspects of your life that it makes more sense to fit in. I think. Um, yeah. But you know, Try it. If you like it, you you keep it up, you know. All right, Miss Tiki, I like that. What project took you the longest time to make and how long did it take? Okay, so probably I just happened to have a project right here. So last year I did a year-long crochet along called the Stitch Adventure Blanket. And it is a full-size blanket. You can sort of try to get... Some <laughs> so um, the way the blanket crochet along was set up was every week people had a couple of different rows. And so I crocheted along the same way, making it. I designed it week by week so I could take pictures of each week. And even though that's not, I think, my biggest project, that probably took the longest to make just because of how many details in um, putting the pattern together. I've actually made a queen size blanket before I know why am I why am I crazy? Yeah. Um, it was a gift <laughs> so that was probably the longest longest and I don't even I don't know the hours just blurred into and it had black yarn in it I mean like uh, what was I thinking it was a lot of and and sewing weaving in ends and black yarn and yeah but those are probably my two biggest like for me my thing I guess for YouTube because YouTube is you have to put out my patterns are accessories, hats, yep. scarves, mittens, bag. I have to put up, yep. put up quick patterns. And when I, somebody's like, we should do a blanket. I'm like, you'll be so mad at me that I haven't <laughs> come out with a pattern in weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> blanket. I've never met, no, I no longer make things for myself. I instantly think, yeah. What does the analytics say? My audience wants to see what color looks great on camera. Yeah, I know. Red is like, I can hardly make red stuff and I really love it. But the pictures just, they don't work for me. They look terrible. Okay, we'll take one last question. This one's for me. What brand is your bike desk? It's called the Fit Desk. I, when I look this desk up, I'm one of those people who looks at every single review. Oh, and cool. Months and I'm like, should I? Let me look at another review. I'm that person. This is a good desk. I'm going to do a review after a full month. I even took my leg measurements and my stomach measurements. Oh, cool. People. So I'm like, listen, after a month of being on this and how many miles, I'll let you know. So it's only been five days. You still got some time for my video. That's <laughs> awesome. I'm looking forward to that one. I want to know more about this device. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this live stream and make sure you check back in next week where we'll have one of our regular boring old live streams without Miss Marie. Thank you so much for having me. And it's great to meet everybody and uh, have a wonderful weekend. All right. See you guys. Let me press the end button. <laughs>